guys it's lovely to see you all again I'm Leila and today we're going to do a floral tutorial I have recently realized that we haven't done any flowers so far so today we are going to use soft pastels and black paper to create a beautiful sketch for inspiration I've decided to use these flowers I've just recently found out that orchids were the first flowers to ever flower Previously, plants would use things like spores, roots, and other ways of multiplying. And this is the image I'm going to use for reference. Okay, so today I would like to show you how you can use the soft pastels on black paper. It's just a usual black paper that I'm going to be using here. There's nothing very specific about it. It's not very shiny. It's not too heavy, but not too light. So something in between. And I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find something like this in any art store. Um, or perhaps even a stationery store. Now, to start, as always, we're going to use pencil. Now, this is a graphite pencil. And a lot of my students ask me about using pencil on the black paper. Now, the thing is, because graphite is almost silvery it's shimmery you can always see it anyway i hope you guys can pick it up on the camera as well and it's always better to use your pencil especially if you're working on something quite precise because it is quite hard to completely erase uh, things like charcoals or soft pastels uh, away from your paper let's go so what I'm doing now is I'm marking through main things that will help me build the rest of the composition. So I'm looking at the branch and then I'm going to situate my flowers. And if you notice, I don't go into, into detail. I just drew a circle pretty much, which will determine you know close relative size of my flower and also the position of it on the drawing and now I'm going to place a couple of those green leaves and let's look at the flowers more in detail so I'll actually before we start I'll erase the things that we don't really need and I'm going to start sketching through the actual shape of the petals where we can already pay a bit more attention to the detail And remember, when you're drawing flowers, you don't need to get extremely precise. Because when you're working on natural objects, like even, for example, like an apple, it's not like a ball. A ball will be perfectly round. An apple is all, you know, always has these little imperfections about it. Same with flowers. You know, it's so natural and it's so free-flowing that you don't need to worry about getting it a millimeter to millimeter precise you know this is this is probably a subject matter that would offer the most freedom for things that you consider incorrect and another flower so i'm just using i'm using sort of a semicircle to mark that inner part of the flower petals more petals And now um, we can look at the larger petals just around it. So one elongated one here and another one here. Maybe this one a bit bigger. I'll make it a bit bigger. Whenever you're drawing any flower, doesn't matter which one, one of the main things when you're drawing petals is number one to look at the positioning so are they overlapping each other um, are they for example one underneath the other one you know sort of like a fan um, are they joined quite close together 
that's number one and another is the actual shape of the petal i mean to some degree they are similar but some are more elongated you know shorter and other things like for example with this particular flower even though the petals are quite sort of elongated but rounded at the same time we do have things like little spikes and things on them like on the end like a sort of spiky tip there so these are the things that are important to put through especially if you're not just drawing an imaginary flower but if you are trying to bring across a specific species you know if you want it to be recognizable as a rose or a lily or something else so now that i've got things marked up on my paper i am going to use first greens and remember i will be even though i will be focusing on one thing and then the other we kind of have to work on everything at a very similar rate you don't want to have one thing perfectly finished without having even the first layer or two on something else so i'm going to very softly apply the green And you see how I'm really, really sort of relaxed about it. I'm not being too tight at this stage. So, you know, we'll have enough time for tightness later on. There's another one there. There's another one. I think these are the flower stalks that are visible. Okay. So my next color will be one of the pinks and again what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to very softly sketch that through. We will have a lot of room for changing and reshaping. So as you can see, this is a very, very um, sketchy at the moment. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start smudging. And you see how quite a bit of color fades. And the reason for that is because we're working on the black paper. So we'll actually have to layer a little bit more than we normally would if we were using white paper. But you get a really really strong brightness in that contrast with the background so you know there are always pluses um, even though there might be some minuses so it's actually really fun to work on black paper with strong colors and i will do a very similar thing with the green as well just softly go over it for blending so at the moment we've got these cloudy blobs um, which means we need to go for even more definition so next I'm going to use a lighter shade of pink and I'm going to again I'm not being too strong I'm not pressing too hard I'm kind of a softly building it up So areas that catch quite a bit of shadow, I am not applying a lot of this light color because remember how when we're working on white paper, we've got all of our highlights provided for us. When we're working on gray paper, we've got a lot of mid-tones provided for us. And now we've got most of the shadows there. So everything that's lighter than the darkest shadow, we have to change with application of the pastel. And again, let's give it a little bit of a smudge okay 
so now we can go in with lighter shades so I'm not going for white just yet but I'm using this creamy white which is sort of a little bit of a yellow there or maybe a little bit of ochre mixed in and I'm going to go for those areas that have a lot of light naturally so parts of the flower that are quite quite white Okay, we'll get to those ones later actually um, let's do do these little bits and this one here So at this stage, I'm going to leave this color alone and I'm going um, to get the greens again and I'm going to start adding a little bit more, you know, giving just a bit more juiciness to these greens. can see how when you're ready to build up your pastels quite a bit you start to get a really cool a really cool um, contrast that makes things just so much more brighter and more vibrant but we're still going to soften this so this is not the final stop so we're still building them up. Okay, let's build up a little bit more of our flowers again. So I'm going to go for the lighter. And again, I'm just roughly sketching it through because I will still be blending it quite a bit just the really bright parts so now again I'm going to blend them out to create this sort of a very more, e more even I'd say over shade. And now I also want to put a bit more detail into these flower these parts of the flowers. You know the colors that we haven't actually marked so far. So I'm just using a bit of grey in these shadow areas. And now I'm going for the red, more of a red rather than a pink at this stage. And I am going to work on these areas which contain quite a bit of red. would like to add some of this um, shade through the petals and of course I'm going to smudge that in
Okay, so my next step is using even brighter red to just build a bit of, of that transition there. Okay, so now I would say we've got most of the areas shaded the color it is. What we need to do now is we need to start looking at the shades, at color changes and also patterns because as you would see on the image as well there are lots of little patterns lines and things like that on these flowers so this is what we're going to do now so first um, let's go over the greens and do all of that what i just said before with the green so now i'm going to focus on smaller areas and make sure that we're getting them to where we want them to be But as always, remember that the artwork is not finished, you know, that one spot is not 100% finished until the whole artwork is finished. And the highlight here is so strong, I'm actually going to use this color just to go over it a little bit. A strong highlight there and there and now I'm gonna go over it with a green again to just get it back to green so now that we've lightened it up this green is going to appear lighter than it did before and what I mean by lighter see how it's much more sort of a zingy um, than it was before we've applied some of the lighter color and that works for everything it works for painting for drawing for a lot of things when you're working on the background that is not white if your color is not strong enough you can always apply a bit of a lighter shade and then reapply the color you want and you would get a much brighter effect I'm just using some brown for some shadows. And now I'm going to do a very similar thing to the flowers. doing is I'm creating you know all the little details and pat and, and patterns now that little bit is in quite a bit of shadow so we want to sort of uh, push it back a bit areas that are catching quite a bit of light I'm gonna go over them with white and now I'm not going to completely smudge it if I need to smudge it I'm just gonna really softly maybe to blend them and but I'm not going to rub everything out of shape like we did in the beginning
another tip that I can give you um, and that is concerning the material now because soft pastels are reasonably messy sort of a thing to work with and reasonably hard to control as well so they're a bit messier than say um, graphite pencils but if you still love using them but you want to get more detail than this my suggestion is to go to the art shop and get some pastel pencils because you can get them also in pastel in pencil shape just like charcoals um, and that gives you a little bit more precision um, but that's only if you want to use this and still want to get into detail although even in pencils it's still not the best material that you can use for details but you can get this beautiful color you know there's always you always have to give something to get something back so you get this beautiful color but you lose the um, the control over the details the complete control I mean you still have quite a bit of control but the complete control is is lost now this flower just catches so much more light actually this petal here too I'll, I'll probably need to add even lighter color than this in some areas Now these parts of the flower um, are a bit more red rather than pink. That's why I'm using sort of a little bit of a warmer shade. And I'm gonna bring just a little bit of it through on these petals as well. Now I'm going to use white for the centers and for these um, little highlights that are almost like little outlines on the petals. I think they give this really cool freshness and almost like make these flowers look almost like a print on fabric or something like that. It's pretty cool. And you can see how already just doing those little things, you know, they're finishing touches uh, and they kind of put everything together and lift your flowers up. But you cannot do them until you've done all of the layers previously, because if you go straight for these things, they're just going to look like weird lines on your um, paper. That's why it's just it's a process of building things up to the point where you can do this. And now I'm actually pressing quite hard. I think if I press any harder, I'm gonna start crumbling this. And a little bit of a lighter strokes there. You know, that sort of gives a bit of a bit more dimension.
and just strengthen all of these highlights as well okay so here it is i hope you've enjoyed this video and gave it a try let me know where else you would like to draw with me and don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell also check out my patreon page where you can support me and also watch all the extra videos that are not featured on youtube make sure to check out all the tiers as well as i offer different rewards so that you can find something that's just right for you and as always thank you for drawing with me